Our Android application is now coming together quite nicely. We need to take a look at the user interface and remember that we try to reduce clutter in an Android app to make it simple and easy to use no matter what else you might be doing at the time. So every single widget on this screen is something that we have to interview and determine, does it really need to be there? In the old days, any kind of action we wanted the user to do usually involved a button or clicking a button because in the old days, we ran software on computers like PCs where we ran them on a desktop. And the monitor was just a way to show us read-only information. But in devices like an Android device, we know it's touch sensitive. So we can take advantage of this touch sensitive nature and consider how to use natural gestures that will replace buttons. For example, I have save, open, camera, and upload. Save could easily be a swipe left. Uh, open existing could be a swipe right, so we could kind of iterate through our existing records like a carousel. Take a photo could be something like swipe down, and upload could be swipe up. So you see, we could get rid of all of this clutter with a series of simple gestures. One note though, we do want to keep in mind that uh, a wide variety of people will use our application, and we want to make sure that our application is usable by a wide variety of people. So before going exclusively to gesture or exclusively to color or vibration, keep in mind that there are differently able people and we need to be able to accommodate different abilities of our users. So first of all, let's consider how to add this gesture. And it's part of it's fairly straightforward, but part of it's more tricky than you might think. So the first thing that we need to do is add a new interface to our long and growing list of interfaces. And this interface is going to be gesture detector. Dot on uh, gesture listener. Now, like any interface, that's going to give us a whole series of methods that we need to implement. So alt enter implement methods, quite a few that we need here. But there's only one that we're really interested in. The only one that we're interested in is the on fling. The others might be handy on down, on show press, single tap up, on scroll, things that we can use there. But on fling is the one that we're most interested in. If we take a look at on fling, we'll see that we have a motion event, a second motion event, and then two floats. It's probably easier if we give these more descriptive names of what they are. So let's call the first one down event because that's when the user is typing down on the device. The next one we'll call it a move event because this is when the key, uh, after the user presses on the device, the user moves his or her finger. Uh, float V and float Y, this is going to be the velocity along the X axis. So we'll say velocity X and the velocity on the Y axis. So velocity Y. So now we have our coordinates and we just need to determine what to do with them. First though, what is the return false? What's the meaning of that? That means, did we consume the event or not? So if we consumed the event, in other words, we did some action on the event and we do not need to pass it on to any other components, we will return true. If we did not consume the event, so we did not do some kind of behavior based on this event, we want to return false. So let me change this line to I'll do a little bit of refactoring here. We'll say return result and I'll say uh, Boolean result equals false. So assume we did not consume the event unless we know otherwise. Okay, now let's take a look at what we have. We have a down event, which is when the user is initially pushing down to initiate a swipe. Then we have a move event, which represents the user moving his or her fingers across the screen. Now the trick is that a move event isn't perfectly up, it's not perfectly down. So we have to determine if it's more up or if it's more down. We do that by determining whether the greater movement was along the X axis or was along the Y axis. So let's start by saying move event. Remember that's the second of the two events dot get Y, which is the uh, location, the Y location on that uh, move event. And then let's subtract that from down event dot get Y. So essentially how far did the user's finger traverse across the Y axis? So let's take these two and let's save them into a number. We'll say uh, float diff y, like so, equals move event get y, move event get uh, down event get y. Now you probably can guess the next one I'm going to do. Move event dot get x minus down event dot get x. So uh, what was the movement along the x-axis? We'll save this into a variable, float diff x 
equals move of int get x minus down of int get x. So we're just looking at the movement uh, across the two. Now let's determine which one was greater, which was greater movement across y or x. <clears throat> and here I'll say if math dot abs, so we're looking at an absolute value, whether it was, you know, if it's a down of n, it might be a negative value. If it were an up swipe, it would be a positive value. We're not carried about the, we're not, we're not worried about the sign just yet. Uh, so we just want to say which had the greater movement. So absolute value says remove the negative if there is any and make a negative a positive. Uh, so math apps diff x uh, greater than math dot eight, whoops, greater than math dot abs diff y. Open curly, and we'll just say in here right or left swipe, and then close curly, we'll say else, and then we'll say up or down swipe. I'm putting excessive comments in here just because the math gets a little tricky and I want us to not lose our place. Now the next thing is, what's the difference between a swipe or a tap? We have to make sure that the user has actually moved his or her finger a great enough distance to be considered a swipe, not just a tap or an accidental touch. So let's say if math.abs and then diff x is greater than well, let's say 100, so kind of like 100 units, 100 pixels, uh, and math.abs, and then we'll say velocity x is greater than, and once again, we'll say 100 units, 100 pixels or so. Uh, but I don't like having magic numbers sitting here in code, so Control-Alt-C, and we will turn this into swipe threshold. So I have a feeling we might use this again. So swipe threshold, and then we'll call this one a velocity threshold. So again, control alt C and we'll say velocity threshold, or we'll say swipe velocity th threshold. Like so, okay. And I'll say if diff X is greater than zero. So if it's a positive number, then we'll say on swipe right, I've not created this method yet, so we will uh, let Android Studio create the method for us. But first, that's if the difference in X is positive, which indicates a swipe to the right. Else, the difference would be negative. So if it's not greater than zero, it must be less than zero. So we'll say on swipe left. Again, that method does not exist. So a little alt enter, create the method on swipe right. That looks good for me. And this essentially becomes our method handler for a right swipe. On swipe left, I'm sure you know where this is going, create method on swipe left, and there we go. Now all we need to do is handle the up and down swipes. So going to be very similar here. I'm going to say if math.abs, now we're looking at diff y instead of diff x. So the difference in y, if it's greater than our swipe threshold, remember this constant we made earlier, there we go, and math.abs, let's say velocity y, remember going against the y-axis for an up or down, is greater than swipe velocity threshold, then we have a legitimate up or down swipe. So I'll say if diff y is greater than zero, then we'll say on swipe bottom, okay, else on swipe top. And again, those methods don't exist. I'm delegating out to a few methods here just to kind of make our code look a little bit cleaner. And then what we can do, we, we essentially have some method handlers now that we can populate. We haven't put anything in them just yet. There we go. We haven't put anything in, in them just yet, but we certainly can. Uh, as I mentioned, my goal would be to make it a button replacement for a lot of these buttons and clean up the UI a little bit, but we can just do a little toast for the moment. So we'll say toast dot make text this comma, and then we'll say swipe top, comma, and then toast dot length long, and then show. Uh, this is just temporary. So normally I wouldn't hard code text in a toast, but uh, this is something that we just want to make sure, you know, that we have our proof of concept working. So we'll say swipe top, swipe bottom, swipe left, and swipe right. 
And for the swipe swipe left or swipe right, I'd be tempted to wire this up to our existing save button. That'd be a good thing to try out. Okay, one more thing that we need to do. We need to register this with a touch event. So uh, right now we have this handy set of methods, but we're not actually subscribing them to anything. So let's add an on touch event. I'm going to start typing on touch event. Now wait a minute. Why is it that I can start typing on touch event and this little method kind of helper appears? Well, the reason is that we are overwriting a method from the superclass activity. And so we're saying, hey, I want to handle any touches that occur. So on touch event, uh, notice it gives us a super call. And the super call is essentially going to go up and say, uh, okay, give, uh, perform the logic that would have happened if I were not overwriting this method. Now, the touch event needs to pass our uh, motion event that it's receiving here to something called a gesture detector. And so I'm going to go up into the onCreate method, which like a lot of other methods, starting to get fairly long. But nonetheless, I'm going to say uh, detector. Actually, I'll just say new gesture detector. And I'll pass in this and control alt F and initialize in current method that looks good okay and now i'm going to go down to the on touch event method and i'm going to say here we go gesture detector and then we'll say on touch event and we'll simply pass this event method down to or this event uh, parameter into the gesture detector on on touch event that's going to pass these events into our on fling eventually so I can snap a couple of breakpoints here and we can watch what happens live as we do this. One more thing before we do that live demo. I need to return true if I am consuming this event. So if I go to the on swipe right, on swipe left, so on and so forth, and essentially anywhere where I'm within this threshold, I'm going to go ahead and say, whoops, I'm going to go ahead and, and change our result boolean to true to say don't pass this event on down to any other method. So let me go ahead and do that. And now we'll run, we'll see how it looks. Now I'll say this, this gets a little tricky to demonstrate in the debugger, uh, but we'll give it a shot here. So I'm going to press down and you notice I get a press event on that and then swipe right and then release my mouse button. If you take a look, the first event that we intercept is an action down and I'll go ahead and choose F9. So if you look just above my cursor here, there's action down, that represents the down press. F9, the next one in is the action move, which means we've already pressed down and now we're pressing move. So I press F9, and I mentioned this one gets a little bit tricky in the debugger just because of how it intercepts these touch events. So I'm going to head, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the breakpoint and on touch event. Let's try a few more. So notice this time without that breakpoint, it's able to see the down and the move are together. And let's walk through our code now as we say, what's the difference in Y? What's the difference in X? The difference in y is minus 26, the difference in x is 612. So you see much more going on along the x-axis than along the y-axis. So we have eight, no surprise there, because there's more going on on the x-axis, it's either a left or a right swipe. We go in and we find out this is a swipe right. I press F7, and if I can manage to get this up, uh, it'll be a little bit tricky here, but I, if I press F9 and then quickly raise it, you see there's the swipe right indication. So we can try again with the other ones. I can drag to the left and again, very similar logic that we saw before. This time though, it goes to on swipe left. And if I very quickly choose F9 and then pop it up, you see swipe left. So sure enough, it's able to determine the difference between a swipe right and a swipe left, swipe left. So it's gonna be very similar for a down and an up, so on and so forth. Uh, so this one, let's see our difference in Y here is huge. The difference in Y is negative 1106, where the difference in, in X is uh, 4205. So this was an up-down swipe. We see that's going to come down to our up-down region. And uh, it skipped over it, which surprised me a little bit. But what's interesting here is our diff Y uh, is fine. The diff Y at 1106 is greater than the swipe threshold of 100. It's the velocity that was not great enough. So there again, with the mouse, it's a little trickier than to uh, demonstrating with an actual finger. But if I go a little faster this time, uh, we'll see if we get if we get the results we expect. So okay, this time the difference in Y may be a little hard to see under that breakpoint there, but the difference in Y is 
1567, so that surpasses our threshold. This time the velocity is much greater. In other words, the speed at which I'm swiping is much greater. So we see a velocity of 8,000. And if I F8, we see this is a swipe top. In other words, we started at the bottom and we landed at the top. You might have a better way of phrasing that yourself, maybe a swipe up or something like that. But nonetheless, a quick F8, and I think I might have had my timing off a bit there. I might, I might have missed it there, but a quick F8, and we see that that gives us our toast for swiping to the top. Swipe to the bottom is going to be a very similar deal. So uh, drag and, and pull down. Hopefully my velocity was good there. Uh, let's see. My Oh, my velocity just made it. So difference in Y coordinate of 1512. The velocity is 123. And sure enough, this one gives us a swipe bottom. So I will try to very quickly F9 and click and swipe bottom and there you see. So in this video, we've been able to demonstrate how to handle a swipe top, swipe bottom, swipe left and swipe right. The next thing that I would do in theory, you see I have the save specimen. Um, this is very easy to do. Uh, because I used butter knife here to, to marry up the save specimen method with the save button. In other words, when I click the save button, it, it invokes the save specimen method here because I gave it an annotation that's tied to the button. I use butter knife to do that. Because of that, this method is a method that I've made up. In other words, it did not have to conform to any specific method signature. Where traditional button clicks, we have to pass in a view and we have to do several other things. Well, because I was able to name this method signature as I want, this makes for a really good case for a swipe uh, right. So I could just say save specimen here, you see, and I invoke it like so. For swipe left, I could iterate through my specimens, swipe bottom, uh, maybe I bring up the camera, swipe top, maybe I do an upload, something like that. But moral of the story here is these swipes become events and they can cause event-based behavior to happen just like an on-click is an event. So as I have it now, pressing the save button or swiping, I think I said swipe, uh, swipe right, uh, pressing the save button or swiping right are both going to cause the same behavior to happen. And if we get our, our users used to this, we can start eliminating buttons and have a much simpler look and feel. So I hope this video has been helpful. I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.